Okay, we're at the site of a recent project and I'll let Kyle take the lead on this one. He was in charge of this. So um, Kyle, go ahead and take it away. Yeah, so to start out, we had a propane furnace and a propane water heater and the homeowners were looking to start saving some money on their bills. Uh, as you may know, propane can be quite expensive, so any bit helps. And after looking through all the options out there um, and them wanting to get cooling as well, we ended up settling on a Mitsubishi all-electric heat pump air handler and a rude hot water heater, uh, which is also a heat pump as well. Awesome. Um, and on this Mitsubishi, there are some things that aren't standard with this unit. So what did we add onto this? Um, yeah, so we redid most of the return ductwork here in the garage and sealed everything up um, with these nice clean lines, uh, with the actual hand sealant there. Um, and these Mitsubishis actually ship with a washable filter in here, but that one doesn't do as good as we'd like. So we ended up putting in an oversized paper filter there. Uh, and then we also added a iWave R air purifier. Okay. Um, those are, they do a really, really good job with the smoke and allergens that are in the air around here, especially in this wooded area that we're out particularly. Yeah, and dust, I mean, they're, it's a great product. Yeah. Very simple. Um, we, I mean, I personally, I like it just because it's, it's simple. I've seen a lot of products fail that are far yeah. too complicated. So yeah, no, uh, no bulbs that need to be replaced on it. Um, no maintenance virtually. Yeah. yeah, I like it. Awesome. Um, the only thing on this heat pump water heater that we added that um, that Kyle thought was a good idea, and I agree, is this drain pan that's sitting underneath the water heater. You don't always see those in a garage because people think, well, if the water spills over and uh, lands onto the cement, not a big deal. But that little platform up there, those are shared wells with the house. We don't want any, um, you know, we don't want any flood damage or mold, or we don't want to compromise that plywood sub base so that's why we put that in that drain line goes all the way to the outside so all right so here we are at this outdoor unit on this mitsubishi and uh yeah there's a few reasons why kyle decided to go with this unit um so kyle go ahead and take it away so like i said before lots of uh factors go into making a decision on what outdoor unit and indoor unit to go with one of the biggest here was, since this was the best place to put the outdoor unit, we wanted to make sure it was as quiet as possible because this is the master bedroom on the other side of this wall. Okay. So, as you can see here... I'll, I'll uh, lead you into the decibel meter. 55 decibels on the high end there, right at the unit, doesn't get much quieter than that. Yeah, that's awesome. And so, some details on the install itself. Um, we actually dug out the ground where we were going to put our pad. We laid our own gravel, that's 3 8 gravel, to make sure that thing does not come out of level. Um, we've got a strap securing it to the front. We've got a strap on the side to the building. And to keep from resonance, we have an anti-vibration isolator right there. We also have a surge protector on the disconnect and a thermo thimble leading into the crawl vent to keep rodents from getting in there. So overall, great install. And a great unit. 